Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that is breaking news just in from Detroit's east side where firefighters responding to a call are involved in a violent crash on 8 Mile. Glad you're with us at 11. The fire truck hitting several cars and a utility pole, and that in turn brought down power lines. Amazingly, nobody seriously hurt, though. Tim Pamplin is on the scene with a night cam. Tim. A couple of firefighters in the back of the ambulance there just getting checked out. I had a few bumps and bruises after this almighty collision here out of drive in Dequinda. That's like seven and a half mile in Dequinda. Engine 56 here was responding to a fire, lights and sirens, when it got to the intersection and everything went haywire. Fire truck careening into vehicles and then taking out a utility pole, sending power lines draping over all of them. Now here's the images from the other side of Dequinda. You see that silver sedan that I'm being told that was parked up at a pump here. No one in it when the fire truck came barreling into the back of it. Amazingly, no serious injuries here. A couple of firefighters, like I say, are being checked out, but just as a precaution. I'm hearing crews from DTE are about five minutes out. They're going to cut the power to any of these power lines, and the crash investigation will get underway. That is a scene along Dequinda and out of drive tonight with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. Hey, Tim. Turning now to the weather with uh, some big changes headed our way. Let's get over to Ben. We could be looking at uh, some record like warmth tomorrow, Ben. Yeah, Devin and Kim. In fact, we may set our first record around sunrise with the highest low temperature that we've ever seen for October 1st. And it's going to be pretty close to this number, 69 out there. The dew point's not far behind, so these temperatures aren't going to change much as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. Highs eventually hitting 87. If we get there, that'll be a degree off of our record high. So that'll be second record in jeopardy tomorrow. Then we've got to start worrying about thunderstorms. There's a marginal risk for severe weather. This is mainly north of Detroit and primarily in the evening. But this is not the end of the rainfall this week. We'll look at how much rain we're going to pick up over the next three days, all coming up in a few minutes. Kim? Developing tonight, one person is dead after a high-speed motorcycle crash on Detroit's east side. Witnesses say the bike was going 100 miles per hour. Surveillance video shows the moment the motorcycle slammed into a car on 8 Mile Road in Hamburg. The woman riding the motorcycle was pronounced dead on the scene. The driver says there was nothing he could do. Came to the stop sign. Now, as I was leaving, it was it seemed to be clear. The first biker flew right past me, and then as I it looked like it was clear. As I was going, I seen the other biker. As I was going into the second to third lane, the other biker came out of nowhere and just hit me. As you heard that the driver is cooperating with police. The crash remains under investigation. Tonight, the ink is drying on the new state budget signed by Governor Whitmer just a few hours before tonight's midnight deadline. The, the governor using her red pen to veto nearly a billion dollars worth of spending, including funding for roads. Mara McDonald is tonight in Lansing with the latest. Mara. Hi, Devin. Here's the situation. The governor and the Republican leadership at this hour are essentially trading barbs with one another. Um, you know, status quo. But the reality at this hour is this. You have got no budget shutdown happening at midnight. You have more time for them to come to some sort of a deal on major ticket items like road fixes. In a sign of the times, the governor used Twitter to send out this message tonight. I had to use the line item veto to try to clean up budgets that were a complete mess, built on phony numbers, using funds in the wrong way, usurping executive power. These are important things that I had to eliminate from these budgets. And the Republican leadership fired right back. The Speaker of the House, Lee Chatfield, saying, quote, this whole budget impasse was silly and avoidable. Now that the governor's shutdown threat has been shown to be simply empty words, the cameras will stop rolling and headlines will move on. Hopefully that means she will finally come back to the negotiating table and get back to work. Whitmer's line item vetoes include nixing $375 million for roads. So what does it all mean? With a budget in place and no shutdown, more time for Whitmer and the legislature to craft deals for roads that everybody may not love but can live with. 
Back here live, some things to watch tomorrow. Let's see what happens with the governor and more budget machinations, meaning this. She has the ability to move money within departments, money that's already been appropriated. So is she going to keep the money where the Republicans want it in their budget, or is she going to get in there and move things around? In addition, Devin, I think we're going to get a chance to see all those 147 line item vetoes, something that we have not, as of yet tonight, seen where it all goes. Back to you. Well, going to need some extra money for ink pens, I would think. Uh, this is an extraordinary use of the line item veto, isn't it? Well, it's it's very aggressive, that is for sure. And, I, you know, I've been covering Lansing in various forms for about 25 years, and I've never seen a governor have such an aggressive yeah. line item veto in a budget. So this is not the norm. Um, Sure gets everybody back to the bargaining yeah, table, seems, though. Seems to back be to historic you. in that respect. Exactly right. We'll continue to follow. All right, Mara. Uh, meanwhile, other political news tonight. Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib facing an investigation from the House Ethics Committee over complaints about campaign spending. While Tlaib was running for Congress last year, her campaign says she paid herself a $4,000 a month salary out of campaign funds. Tonight's spokesperson for Tlaib denies any wrongdoing in that, saying the Congresswoman is cooperating with the committee and that she publicly disclosed her salary during last year's campaign. One year ago, a gunman stormed into a home on Detroit's west side, shooting five-year-old Isabella Coleman and her mother. Isabella died from her injuries. Her mother, who was shot 17 times, survived. Church leaders, a youth group, and neighbors raised thousands of dollars to rebuild the home where it happened. As Priya Mann reports, it's the first step in a lifelong commitment to Izzy's project. A young mom standing at her front porch was shot more than a dozen times. Her five-year-old daughter killed while she slept. More than a year later, this home has been transformed into a refuge for other young moms and their babies. We're here to help and we're here to give them hope. Through tragedy, we will get trial. City Covenant Church members, the Brightmoor community and Young Life spent the last year rebuilding this home. So this was a total collaboration. Redo the floors, we had to paint, they had stole the water heater and the furnace. All right, and the house was in pretty bad shape. The home was once only connected to the brutal murder of five-year-old Izzy. Her mom, Deja, left to die in the front hallway. A year later, the young mom spent a few hours back in the home where she lost her baby. To see her reaction, she was very strong today. I think it helped uh, Deja more with closure. All right, I think her coming to this place, that such a horrific thing happened, and now to see it, be a beacon. Her daughter's legacy will live on. The family's home turned into a resource for children and young moms. They may need diapers, they may need formula, they may need a car seat. I wish I had a place to go to when I was a teen mom because it's rare to have a place where you can go. We're like the, the grandmothers that, that's <laughs> just still here to help mm -hmm. them, kind of encourage them. To see this community come together, rally around this family, and to turn something that was horrific into ultimately something Thank good. You. We Thank you, Lord God, Thank you. for protection, Thank Lord God. You. And in addition to prayer, the community raised thousands of dollars to get Deja into a new home. At this time, Izzy's killer has not been caught, but Pastor Thomas says Izzy's legacy will live on with Izzy's project. He hopes the initiative spreads across the city. Reporting live from Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Priya. Well, the UAW strike against General Motors now moves into week number three. Both sides wrapping the tonight's talks about an hour ago. No deal this evening. Today marks the first day striking workers are eligible for strike pay, which is $250 a week paid through the UAW strike fund. As both sides continue their talks, the key issues remain pay and a path for temporary workers. Police are searching for the two people responsible for uploading pornography to a billboard in Auburn Hills. Video released today shows what appears to be two young men breaking into a shed by the billboard at I-75 near 59. Inside that shed is the laptop that displays the images that display on the billboard. The pornography was up for about 30 minutes before it was shut off. If you have any information, call Auburn Hills Police. As President Trump faces allegations that he pressured the Ukrainian president to investigate Joe Biden and his son, a second phone call involving another world leader has been uncovered. The Justice Department confirming the president sought help from the Australian prime minister to review the origins of the Russia probe. 
Meanwhile, the House has issued subpoenas for the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to turn over documents related to the controversial Ukraine call, a phone call that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was also on. That's according to NBC News. Giuliani has until October 15th to hand over the documents. Still to come, it, uh, is something the average American eats uh, maybe three or four times a week. Yeah, we'll have what researchers are now saying about the health impacts of eating red meat. And a man shoots and kills a burglar on his property, but it's what he did next that led to murder charges. Steve. It's a dangerous new trend on social media that every parent needs to know about. It might seem harmless. It grows into something. Teenagers taking money from men in exchange for pictures of them online. Could your kids be doing this? I have some friends who actually do that and they will get money. We expose this new online threat coming up. Both Pizza Month and October begin tomorrow. Tasty Tuesday as one of Jason Carr's favorites. See where one man is keeping his mom's recipes alive. Tomorrow at 5, a six-year-old girl, a six-month-old baby, both lost to violence. Two beautiful children caught in gang-related crossfire here in Detroit. They're two of many innocent victims of Detroit gang violence, but federal investigators never forgot Miracle and Anaya and they vowed to put these gangbangers behind bars. What it's about is innocent people getting caught in the crossfire. I'll show you how the feds took down the Playboy gangster.